I'm worried about the repercussions of this. Uh, Senator Allen, how can we go in and do this and then think we can destroy the country and then rebuild it and think that our Western values are what fits this action? We have 10 seconds. <laughs> 10 seconds. <laughs> we're we're going to try our best. We have plans to reconstruct a government, have them greater freedom, greater security, and individual rights. We're going to have as precise a bombing as possible with the minimal uh, and collateral damage of loss of life. And I've got to cut you off there. We'll be back in a moment with more of this special edition of Countdown Iraq, America's Voices. Coming up on the countdown, Saddam showdown. We're hours away from the president's deadline for Saddam. Lester Holt has the latest headlines on the showdown with Iraq. High alert. How safe are we from terror attacks at National home if we go to war? Frank Luntz asks how far the government should go to keep Americans out of harm's way. And paying the price. The war estimates are in. President Bush could ask for billions of dollars. So is taking out Saddam worth the price tag? Find out what America's voices have to say coming up on this special edition of Countdown Iraq. Welcome back to Countdown. We'll continue with more of Frank Luntz and America's Voices. But first, here's your countdown at 30. Operation Iraqi Freedom could be underway in less than 24 hours. That's what the U.S. is now calling the pending war. Military action increasingly inevitable as Saddam and his sons reject the U.S. ultimatum to flee Iraq. Turkey is asking its parliament to vote on a measure allowing U.S. overflights in exchange for allowing Turkish troops into northern Iraq. Today, Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld met with his Turkish counterpart ahead of that request. And a tough question for the NCAA basketball tournament and the Oscars. Will the show go on even if there is war? So far, the NCAA tournament is moving ahead as planned, but the Academy Awards are scaling back, canceling the official red carpet portion of this year's telecast. That's your countdown at 30. Let's go back to Frank Luntz in Washington with more of America's Voices. Frank. Lester. Earlier today, Tom Ridge raised our national security threat status from yellow to orange. Let's hear from Secretary Ridge why he changed that distinction. Now, we have taken these actions because intelligence reporting indicates that while al-Qaeda and those sympathetic to their cause are still a principal threat, the principal threat. Now, Marie, let me ask you, have we misplaced our priorities? Should we be engaged in this war with Iraq while we are still insecure about the situation here? Or is the war with Iraq causing that insecurity? I think misplaced priorities is exactly the point. In where I live in Denver, Colorado, the students have no summer school and the immigrants who are taxpaying workers have no Medicaid. And that's because of this war. And my family is hurting because of it. Do you feel more unsafe now because we may be going to war? Yes, because I'm sure that this is going to lead to more terrorism. All we keep hearing from the president is that the reason we're in this situation is because they hate our freedoms. That's nonsense. It's because of our policy in the Middle East. The fact is, if this leads to more terrorism, that's a problem we're going to have to deal with. If somebody threatens you and tells you not to do it because they're going to hurt you afterwards, it's, that's not a reason not to do the right thing. And this is the right thing. That's Iraq has not threatened us. Matt. That's why we should be going after the terrorists, not necessarily the Iraqis. This Iraq is more terrorists. More terrorists. This will lead to more will? terrorism, possibly in the short term. But in the long term, the defeat of Iraq will lead to less terrorism because they'll have less support. So you're, prepared. Iraq because so you're prepared to take that risk. Yes. You're prepared to lose those lives. We will lose less lives for our troops during the war than we would probably lose during peacetime practice. And fewer Iraqis will die in this war than would die under a year in Saddam's reign. Jump We're in. dealing with probably the most anti-American ruler the world has ever seen. And if we sit back and let him house these weapons of mass destruction, he will inevitably use them against us. What yeah, he, weapons he, of Iraq, mass destruction? None have been found. Iraq. He's already sub, uh, supporting terrorism. He doesn't ha you don't have to make the Al-Qaeda connection. Iraq is a member of the Jerusalem Committee. They've supplied chemical weapons, believably, to, uh, to Hezbollah, who said that the United States, as, long as, is, as well as Israel, is a state of them. But it's not Hezbollah who attacked us. It's Al-Qaeda, Osama bin Laden. And we're, 
we're not even we haven't even found Osama yeah, bin Laden. Well, why not finish the first war that we started? I mean, we haven't even. Where's Iraq? Iraq? Where is the proof against it was Iraq? Proved in the past couple weeks, absolutely definitely that we can take on these two interrelated issues at once. We captured the, the this top Al Qaeda operative, his name I can't remember. Shit. There's rumors that we that we actually captured Osama bin Laden, and that, and that announcement's being. Did we the capture rap. them, or did the Pakistani police capture them? It doesn't matter as long as he's together. in our custody. Where's the proof against it Iraq? Doesn't matter. Where's the it proof doesn't against matter. Against Iraq. Because what that shows is that we cannot control this terrorism issue without the help of a lot of allies. Pakistan was the one who captured these Al Qaeda uh, fugitives, and what and that's why this is so damaging because we are hurting ourselves with ve those very countries that can help us, France and Germany, who we need alongside with us to help us to ferret out these terrorists who want to come out against us. And here we are in the midst of moving forward against Iraq for their violations and possession of weapons of mass destruction and assuming what you're saying is true that Pakistan uh, helped out in getting Sheikh Mohammed obviously they're still doing it there is no evidence that the French or the Germans or any country is not going to continue assisting us look we have we have, there's a lot of rattlesnakes out in the world and it doesn't mean you just look at one you take care of one after another we are obviously able to disrupt and, and take down much of the Al-Qaeda leadership. We also have Saddam, we have North Korea. There are a lot of dangerous situations in the world. It doesn't mean that you and, freeze and, like a, and a, a shivering, on, a shivering on, on. deer in the headlights because there's too much for Senator, you. Senator, these are Senator, human beings, not rattlesnakes. Limited, True. limited military resources. And if you ask our four stars, they will tell you they cannot take all of these fronts on. This here is the problem. Well, the okay, okay, hold on. We're winning the war on terrorism, and we will win. Okay, the I'm losing. Well, unfortunately, I'm losing the war in terms of. Uh, you got to hold on. I'm losing the war in terms of communication here. <laughs> there was a poll that was conducted last night after the president spoke, where we asked the American people, NBC, Wa uh, Wall Street Journal, exactly, do you feel safer or less safe? How might war affect terror threats? 52 percent, half of Americans believe that the threat would increase. Only 60% believe that the threat would decrease. The fact is, Congresswoman and Senator, the American people are more afraid today than they were a month or two or three months ago. You've been trying to get something in. No, I've been, I've been trying to get anyone in this room to answer the question, where is the proof against Iraq? Number two, my next question is... One question at a time. I'm sorry. Hold on. The proof, Go ahead. Jump in. What's the proof? proof? It's stipulated. It has been understood for the last 12 years in all the United Nations Senator, resolutions the that... Proof? Hold on. Don't that, interrupt. That Saddam Hussein possesses weapons of mass destruction, particularly chemical and biological agents. It also has been proven that he's had missiles that, ex that extend and shoot further than prescribed ranges by the United Nations. It also is clear, and it's been stated by Saddam Hussein, that, that he'll pay to families who send their sons and daughters into suicide murders into Israel $25,000. And on top of it, it's understandable why Americans are worried because Osama bin Laden in one of his messages about a month and a half, two months ago, said that this is a war against the United States and against Israel. Let me go so back. Those are all the issues. But then, and but then and when does Congress Jill, declare war? Jill. When does Congress declare war? We have already passed a resolution back last fall. It had bipartisan support. Uh, Republicans were almost unanimous. Uh, it were unanimous, and there was a good number of Democrats as well. And again, the United Nations Security Council, 15 to 0, four and a half months ago, said and recognizes that Saddam Hussein has those weapons of mass destruction. Congressman, they Congresswoman okay, Sanchez okay, then, said the same herself. They Senator, said, wait, they, said on, they had to disarm. Well, they did not step, say they, they had to eliminate the Saddam. What's, what's the proof? <laughs> no. I feel like I don't exist. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, exist. You, you may not, Senator, Frank. Senator, you I got a serious question for you. Sure. Four months ago, we had 15 to 0, as you just noted. Right. We had world support. There were no protests. Everybody was behind us. Didn't we wait too long? Today, just today, the weather in, in Kuwait is awful. They have sandstorms. It's already plus 90 degrees. It's going to be tougher to fight this war. Didn't we wait too long? 
We were we were as patient as we could be. The president didn't we was wait too long? No, I don't. I'm, I'm not going to second guess. Uh, we we That's your, this is your opportunity. My here. my view is is we used as much patience as possible. This question of a, an 18th resolution or vote by the Security Council was really uh, something to assist Tony Blair because of his political needs in in the Great Britain. And Congressman, area. I have to ask you a question. We have waited more than a decade for Saddam to dismantle his, his weapons, to get rid of them. Why should we wait even another day? Because if we longer? can save American lives and disarm Saddam without having to lose those Americans, then it's worth continuing the diplomacy. But because you know what, you him. may not think, but we're working on it. And Blitz came back and he said, you know what, it's coming along. It's not perfect, but we're getting there. And that's why the members who sit in that Security Council said, let's continue to work this way and see if we can get this done. Max, and yet for seven years after the Gulf War, inspections proved fruitless. They weren't even that's there. Correct. They, they weren't even there for four years. And then on the threat of U.S. intervention, now the inspections are working and now they're stalled. They were not there because the, U, because the U.N. decided to pull out, not because Iraq sent us out. And in the beginning of those um, uh, searches, it was working, by the way, if you go back and take a look at the real information. Congress, just woman, as Sanchez, Blitz just remember says when that President they are Clinton working sent, right now. Do you recall, Congresswoman? Sanchez, when President Clinton sent military action and started bombing in Iraq, you were wholeheartedly behind President Clinton in those bombing raids. Isn't that true? I don't recall that. <laughs> I think you ought to look back in Clinton 1998. Said. You were very much in, in support of President Clinton, and you were actually upset that you didn't get back here quickly enough to be able to cast a vote in support of President Clinton's bombing. Of I, 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 I don't understand the why don't we wait, why don't we wait, because we've been waiting for mm -hmm. over 10 years. It never ends. But that friends in Europe in have a long way. history of liking to go slow and wait and wait. We're and waiting history to provide us, it leads to disaster. Matt, very quick. We're waiting to provide a diplomatic solution to have an exit strategy for this regime. What would it it's take to convince years. you that that can't happen? I think the statute Quick. of limitations on diplomatic resolution has run out. <laughs> We've got well, a I, lot I don't of really it so. never I runs think out. patience is a virtue, it, actually. And, and there should be no time you know, Somebody said, somebody out. once okay, said we gotta go. that, we, we gotta go. that you'll get a shot. You, we, we'll, you'll get a shot. We'll open with you for the last segment. never let me go. That's my job. We'll be back in a moment with Countdown Iraq, America's Voices. Coming up on this special edition of Countdown Iraq, America's Voices, Risk Assessment. From the cost of war to the potential loss of American lives overseas, does America think war with Iraq is worth all the risks? The Countdown is coming right back. I think it's going to be decisive. It's the aftermath that is of concern. Why? Because I think we're going to see more um, of our American soldiers die than we're used to seeing. I believe the cost, the financial cost, is going to be incredible in this war. Not just the initial phase, but the decades that it's going to take to be there. And I think we're going to have these little skirmishes, the Kurds and the Turks going at each other. All of this is going to dampen the euphoria of what we feel from this war. And I also believe that we will be having terrorist attacks here in the United States, which is also a cost and a real big negative. Okay, and I think the cost to the UN and to the NATO, what we've done to them in discrediting them, is going to be very difficult to repair. But and the anti-Americanism. My, my fear, my fear is that this it, this conflict is being is being blown out of proportion in, in respect to what is going on in the in the greater world, which is a polarization between is, is extremist Islam and the West, and that's what we, and we need to be prepared to really fight for our ide ideology and believe in that ideology Sandy. if we're going to win this war. And we're polarizing no, the, it the, further. The cost the cost here is about the moral cost because we have now anointed ourselves to make these to make these changes to enact this war and then think about later our preparation. My daughter is living right now in Damascus, Syria. And quite frankly, the, the core issues having to do with Israel and Palestine, having to do with the whole Islamic world, it is not something that we dictate and fix. This, this, this debate is not about Israel and Palestine. This, uh, Hussein attacked the Kurds, he attacked the, the, the Iranians. It wasn't about Israel and Palestine then, it's not about Israel and Palestine now. In fact, 
tangentially related could be a benefit to the Arab-Israeli peace process. Ms. Sanchez, Ms. Sanchez I disagree. No. Um, l listen, to the, listen to the Middle East. What are they saying? What are the terrorists saying? What is their justification for the terrorism? If, it's U.S. foreign policy. That's not what this attack on Iraq is about. No, it's about Halliburton getting contracts. You know, we've it's talked it's about that. Okay, hold on, hold on. Bush's interest. The, the, the French have more interest in Iraqi oil than any American and country. We're take it away from them and no, give it to no, Halliburton. No, no, we're not. That, that's Relax. a typical pap. And, and <laughs> it's Senator absolutely Al false. Well, the Al oil. Finish. Look, look, look at our, our plans. Our it's plans well are number one to disarm Saddam Hussein. It will take a regime change because he's not going to do it voluntarily. We're going to try to protect the integrity of those borders there so you don't have the Turks and the, and the, the Turk, Kurds fighting. The Turks and Thirdly, the, and the Kurds oil. are going to Oil go at will him. be a national asset of Iraq. We may even have it under United Nations control after all of this. It's not our interest to, to take over. That's not our goal. And we are going to liberate the people of Iraq, and they're going to be choosing their leaders. And but yes, at what cost? But legitimately, at what cost? Uh, how, how many Iraqis will die in our process of liberating them? As few as possible. I cannot predict whether it'll be what about the sanctions that have killed people for the last 12 years? The sanctions have done absolutely nothing. Sanctions have killed a lot of children, dying of diarrhea. That's unacceptable. Who has the right to articulate Let him finish. Let him finish. Please let him finish. The Again, point of all of this, of of, of the point of all of this is for our, is, is our security as a nation. We are making the best judgment we can. Our armaments are as precise in their targeting as possible and more precise than in the 1990 war, 1991 war. This country goes out of its way more than any other in military actions to spare civilian lives. And we'll do it here as well. Our goal is Saddam Hussein and his military cohorts, not the people of Iraq. You know, I, I think Bush was right to articulate a larger vision of what he saw for the Middle East, a democracy, which is what we all as Americans believe. The problem is that it's not going to happen in this domino theory that he has, that if we go into Iraq and all of a sudden, after all these centuries, we're going to make all these people get together they're going to elect a president. They're going to live happily ever after. And then Syria next to them is going to take a look and say, oh, yeah, that's really the way to live. And Saudi Arabia is so going to cast off going its going people. Nuclear. It's going to do One this, too. It's never happened before. It's a different culture. It's a different place. It it's a generational thing. Some okay, are Iran negative. Is going some are nuclear. optimistic. I have hope while you have fear. Congresswoman, I don't have fear. Congresswoman, how do you answer the fact that Iran is about to go nuclear? They have their parliament just the other week asserted its right to have atomic weapons. So the fact is, you want to have, you want to leave Iraq in place and have it with its weapons of mass destruction, which we know what the also mood, we know it has mustard gas. They can't account for the VX. Okay, go ahead. Excuse me, sir. Iran already has nuclear weapons. So why aren't we going after them instead of going after Iraq, which we know do not have nuclear weapons? And by the way, the the administration took a report that they knew was wrong and put out the fact to many. Many Congress people exactly. who took a vote saying exactly. that, oh my God, exactly. Iraq Scott is looking for nuclear stuff on the market. You know, we, th there is imprecision from okay. this administration and giving them that information to the American people. We've got two minutes. We've got two minutes left. Senator very Allen, quick. I am very disconcerted by your, your demeanor, your casual demeanor when talking about all of these civilians that are going to die. I'm a person of faith. I'm a mother. And this, it offends my very being that this many children will die. And you're smiling at me. And I'm, I'm just, just about... I'm just I agree with you. I don't want any innocent... Uh, civilians being killed. They will die. Well, 3,700 of them died. Afghanis died within eight weeks of bombing from our cluster bombs that well, looked exactly well, like that. Okay, bombs. let's assume. It's not a lie. Let's that assume, is not let's, the truth. Stop. Well, regardless, let's assume that is true. Does that mean we should not have gone into Afghanistan? Yes. No, you should not have. So we should not have gone into Afghanistan and get after Al Qaeda or the Taliban. Right. No. You need to look up on the BBC right. website, well, Texas that's, and that's Taliban. Your point of view. I think I, I we disagree Senator respectfully. Allen. We've got we've Senator got ninety Allen. seconds left. Senator I Allen. want to get very quickly uh, from from the four of you quickly. 
What advice do you have for President Bush, Scott? Uh, I think that President Bush should be uh, firm in his action and to don't be apprehensive with it. What him. advice for President I Bush? Was, I would suggest to, to people of this country that they seriously look at what's going on here with the United States policy toward Iraq at this time. Also, I want to know how many black people live in Iraq? What advice, Max, do you have for President Bush? So uh, tell the President that he's doing the right thing and to continue with his path and to make the world a safer place. Dominic, what <laughs> advice for President Bush? Stick to your guns, but be, you know, be She's more not. diplomatic. Send Colin Powell to countries to, 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 bring, to, to bring the world into the fold because I think we've, we've isolated ourselves. Actually, what advice for President Bush? I would um, pray for him. I would hope he makes the right decision as he sends our troops into harm's way. And I pray for the families who are going to not see some of their boys and young ladies come back. Senator, what advice for the president? Stay strong, stay resolved, recognize we're going to have to adapt. Undoubtedly, something will happen that we don't expect, but nevertheless, I think our cause is just. And remember that we're trying to liberate people and do what we can to minimize the loss of innocent life. And I think the world will be a better place, will be more secure, and the people of Iraq will have greater liberty. I want to thank everyone, and Scott, as a Marine here, I want to give a special thank you for you for participating today. Thank you, thank you Congresswoman Sanchez. It's a pleasure. Thank you, uh, Senator Allen. This has been a special segment of America's Voices on this very special Countdown Iraq. All right, thank you, Frank.